Hey y'all, what's up? Leave your prayer requests in the bottom. I want to pray over your prayer requests. This channel belongs to the Lord. And I'm going to actually talk about something today that does may make me feel a little bit embarrassed, but I, when I was watching, um, a dear sister in Christ, I, I can't remember your name. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I have, I have a little bit of an issue with remembering people's names. Sometimes I can remember them. Sometimes I can't, but I know your channel. Perhaps you're ready for Jesus. Um, and you, you said something last night in your video that, um, that it, it wasn't bad or anything like that. Um, it was, uh, something that, that made me really think and it made me go, oh my gosh. Um, but I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so the first thing I want to get out of the way is I woke up this morning and I seen the earth master had posted another video and I was looking at it and I seen the earthquakes in California. I seen that the tension and the earthquakes surrounding California and how the tension is truly really building up. And the Holy Spirit came over me and told me, watch for the calm before the storm. And I started flashing all kinds of scenarios in my head. And the Holy Spirit just said, watch for the calm before the storm. You'll know it when you see it. Keep your eyes peeled. And I was like, okay. So... I'm, I don't know, but we need to look up, watch, and be sober. Things are going crazy. Brother Chris did a really good video that he did last night that I watched this morning. Um, there's a lot of things going on in Ukraine, Russia, uh, China. There's stuff going on in Israel and Hezbollah and uh, there's just so much news going on. And today is the 22nd. It is the day they are supposed to sacrifice the red heifer. So we will see what goes on to, we will see what goes on tonight. Um, God is in control of all things, you guys, all things. So I am very, very grateful that I live in the age of grace. And I am very, very grateful that I have the Bible app that can be read to me. That is such a beautiful blessing to me. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard to think about the app not existing. It's hard to think that I may not be able to have the Bible read to me. It's hard to think that it, it will be gone. And to know that I'm not the only one that relies on it. it I'm not the only one that struggles with ADD, ADHD, dyslexic, and dysgraphia. And to read just a couple of sentences feels like an eternity. I'm I'm not a normal reader. I can read, but I can't read. My my reading level is very very low, and that's not due from a lack of trying. I know a lot of people are probably going to come after me and say, "Oh, well you didn't try hard enough or well you didn't do this, you didn't do that." It trust me, it's not from a lack of trying. Um, just to read a couple of sentences for me sometimes, I'm lucky if I can remember what I read. You know, 
I, I've struggled. I mean, I've gotten better at reading. I've just struggled with it my whole life. And I always found it kind of embarrassing. And to go up to somebody and ask them, please read this. I want to know this. Can, can you read this? Because if I, if I try to read it, I'm not going to understand it. I, I'm not going to comprehend it. And I, uh, I just, I struggled with that my whole life, especially when it came to reading the Bible, because I would get told it got read in church. Yeah, but what does it say? Like, I heard the, the sermon, but I still don't understand what the Word of God says. Please tell me what the Word of God says. Read it to me. And just begging somebody. And then feeling really, really stupid. And being made to feel really, really stupid. Just for asking for someone to open up God's Word and read it with you. Even though... We were, like, I grew up in a family that went to church, but it's, you would think if you were in a family that went to church and they knew your disabilities and they knew that you struggled so much that just a few sentences would make you bawl your eyes out because you want to know and you want to understand, but you can't. And... You know, asking somebody and then being, being, being made to feel really stupid because you want to know and understand God's word uh, was a struggle. And I know that there are many other people out there like that that struggle with this and that have struggled with it. And so when the Bible app came out and I could and I found out about it and I knew that I could put on some headphones and have it read to me and I could I could go back if I didn't understand something or did I hear that correctly and I could just manifest and kind of know and understand and absorb the word of God that was a changer that was a blessing in disguise and like knowing that I didn't have to go beg somebody to read the Bible to me Knowing that I didn't have to be made to feel stupid to understand the word of God was a game changer for me. It was an absolute game changer. And then me me and my husband also, we discovered that there was a, there's a Speak For Me app that I could download on my phone and I could copy and paste to my Speak To Me app and have it read to me until I understood what somebody was telling me in a text message. And honestly, being able to follow along with the words has helped me know, like I can spot words and see words and be like, oh, okay, well, this is this. But actually physically writing it out, I still have an issue with that. Like literally when I write something out, people people used to call it the Larissa language it was bad because I would write it. I would know it and understand it. But if you took the paper away from me and gave it back to me a couple hours, I would be like, I didn't write this. I don't even know who wrote this. And it was me that actually wrote the paper. Um, so, um, so I, I'm really grateful, but you know, hearing, and it was a thing that I needed to hear. Because it's true, but it all it it broke my heart to hear it. But the Holy Spirit also said, It's okay. It's okay. You've put the word of God on your heart. You have made a relationship with Jesus. It's okay. Um, but she was saying that the Bible app will be eventually gone. And I, I knew it would be eventually gone. I knew it would eventually be outlawed. But to actually hear it from somebody other than me made me, made me hurt. It made me sad. 
to know that after the rapture, there will be a famine of the gospel. And the people who are just like me, who keep rejecting Jesus, when I think about their struggle, when I think about their struggle of just being able to read a couple of sentences, just being just being lucky enough if they can read a recipe for cooking or understanding what they read, it broke my heart. Because there are going to be people like me that struggle. That are going to be left behind. They're not going to have the luxury of going up to somebody and begging to help read the word. Understanding what they wrote. Understanding what's in the Bible or what they read. They're not, they're, there's going to be people who are going to be... going to be struggling so much they're not going to understand and they're going to be put in such a position where they may just take the mark of the beast because it seems easier because they may feel like knowing God and understanding the word of God is just overwhelming and too much And I've noticed a lot of people that read, because I've been in this position. Why don't you just read it? It's not that hard to read and understand. Did you not graduate kindergarten? And I, I've been there. I've been there where people have given me the hate because of my reading. And my heart breaks for the people who struggle with it. Who, and people don't understand. They think it's us just being um, slow. Or um, us not wanting to put in the effort. But yet, you don't understand how much effort we actually put into reading just one sentence. Let alone one word. A lot of people don't understand that. And. It just. It breaks my heart for the people who are struggling like I was. Like I am. It took me forever to learn how to spell my own name. I still can't spell my middle name. I'm not going to tell you what it is because um, I'm not, I don't really, I don't know. Like my middle name, I wish I would have just changed it when I got married, but I didn't. Because I couldn't think of anything to put in its place. But now I wish I would have thought harder. So I would have had a new middle name. But it, it just it just is what it is. Um, no, it, it's not that bad. It's just, it almost, it sounds like a dude's name. And I don't really like it. But I'm kind of stuck with it. So... It, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are going to see the rapture happen. 
and they're not going to realize how good they actually got it right now. They're not going to realize how much we are truly in the age of grace. And the people that have all of this stuff available to them to help them with their, their disabilities and their struggles and stuff, it will all be gone. And I don't know how to, I, even though I struggle with reading disabilities myself, I don't know how or if I even could leave something behind that would help people read and understand God's word. The only thing I know to do is to leave a physical paperback Bible and to pray over the people who are left behind and to pray that the people with learning disabilities, that God will give them a way to know and understand the Bible in the seven years of tribulation. That's all that I know to do because electricity is going to be off the charts expensive because water is going to be widely unavailable. Um, it's going to be warm wood and blood and, um, all these different things. So everything is going to be expensive. People are going to be on the run and eventually, um, even the battery packs that have the soul, the, the capability for powering up with the solar, eventually that will fill as well. And so it, it, it's a struggle. It's like, what do I do? I feel like all I can do is pray for the people who are going to be left behind, who keep rejecting Jesus. And, you know, the Holy Spirit keeps putting something else on me, too. We're doing what we can in the age of grace. We're warning people. We're trying to tell people, look, please come to Jesus now why you have grace and why you have all these things abundant to you to come to Jesus, understand and know the word of God. So even though our heart breaks for the people who will be left behind, we warned them. They're suffering the consequences of rejecting Jesus. And we just have to put them in God's hand. Jesus is coming very, very soon. God's about to send Jesus to come get us. We need to pray for the people. We need to pray for our loved ones. We need to pray for our enemies. That all will come to know Jesus. And that God will make a way in the seven years for them to know, understand, and draw close to Jesus. Trust in God. Die for Jesus. Just like Jesus died for us. That will be required to be willing to die for Jesus. Jesus loves you guys beyond all measure. If you're struggling with learning disabilities, I'm going to tell you right now, come to Jesus in the age of grace. Why you can still listen to the Bible app and you can find different ways to, to grow in Jesus because in the seven years, right after the rapture, that stuff is not going to be available to you. It's just not. And I can already imagine the anxiety and everything else that you guys are going to be feeling. So please, 
Please come to Jesus now. Time is so short. I don't want you to struggle with what's coming. But yet many will. I just don't want you to be one of them. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here, you guys. If, uh, if I fell lid to make another video today, I will. But um, just keep your eyes on Jesus. All right. Bye, guys.